Eba, chegamos. <risos> chegamos no Facebook, no HCO, para mais uma noite iluminada. Gente, que deleite essa entrevista, mas a gente já vai falar dela. Boa noite, Sup. Boa noite, eu estou olhando aqui para o celular para acessar. A gente Abrindo espera um pouquinho. Abrindo a porta na porta? Se Isso. Convidados. A gente está no estúdio aqui, né? esperando as pessoas entrarem no nosso auditório virtual do HCO. É... É... Deixa eu baixar o volume aqui, porque senão vai vazar. É, o meu Tem que esperar, vazar, porque... esperar um pouquinho, porque as pessoas demoram um pouco para achar. Nada, às vezes ficam, ficam no Facebook procurando. É, e a gente não, vai não, esperando. Enquanto isso... Enquanto isso, nós vamos comentando coisas, enquanto Divya Mina faz as nossas transmissões com a nossa rede HCO de transmissão. Quem tiver alguma página, é, Oxo Facebook, quiser transmitir também lá para os seus é, inscritos na, na na página ou no grupo de Oxo, nós compartilhamos também, se você quiser também participar da rede HCO de transmissão, a gente está hoje no episódio de número 158 da Histórias com Oxo, que está fazendo agora, em setembro, quatro anos de programa, não canse de falar, né? Meu, é agora, mês que vem, é, gente. Quatro é, anos. É daqui o um mês vai ser 28 de setembro, para falar a verdade. A gente começou numa segunda-feira, depois passamos para terça e ficou sempre terça. Já foi. E o episódio piloto, se é que dá para chamar assim, foi numa segunda-feira. E agora estamos no número 158. Hoje é uma gravação. E, enfim, a gente quer preparar algumas coisas, vamos ver se a gente consegue para comemorar os quatro anos, trabalhar um pouquinho com o material que a gente tem, a gente está com algumas ideias também de falar um pouquinho da história do HCO com eu e a, e a minha querida parceira de sempre, de desde o início, de tantas aventuras nessa nave, Oxo. Tantas emoções. <risos> então, gente, bem-vindo Estou vendo aqui Nossa madrinha, fada madrinha Já está aqui A Kilma Já está a Wagma também, a Parita O pessoal vai entrando A gente vai começar a dar os recados Enquanto O pessoal chega Bom, Chegando, né? E... Primeiramente tá. É eu vou começar hoje um pouquinho diferente, né? Oba. Vou falar a primeira coisa sobre o nosso canal, que a gente tem ideias né, para dar sequência, para dar continuidade, e a gente ter maior alcance de convidados. Né? A gente não está muito preocupado com... A gente gosta de, de que tenha gente assistindo bastante, mas gente de qualidade, que é como é a nossa sanguinha. Né? Então, a gente gosta de gente que esteja aqui porque tem interesse no assunto e não só de curiosidade ou vir fazer comentário de qualquer espécie que não a gente não gosta de atrair né é, a gente só atrai só atrai coisa boa a nossa sanguinha é muito especial e assim gente a primeira coisa que eu queria falar hoje é sobre o projeto HCO a gente sobrevive com doações uh... Talvez a gente precise incrementar algumas coisas né, sobre o nosso maquinário, que já está é, quase dando pau. A gente trabalha com os nossos computadores velhos já de muito tempo. E, e, essas, e é, principalmente as entrevistas gravadas, elas demandam bastante do computador para fazer edição. Então, talvez em algum momento a gente precise trocar... É, as máquinas, então é uma coisa que ocupa meu pensamento muito. Eu gostaria muito de remunerar a equipe do HCO para que a gente pudesse, não não é esse propósito, não é lucro, mas as pessoas pudessem receber 
pelo trabalho, porque daí elas podem ocupar seu tempo com aquilo. Não precisa fazer só na hora que depois do na hora vaga depois do expediente né que possa ser o expediente também né eu, esse é meu sonho tô com algumas ideias aí para fazer algumas campanhas talvez a gente ofereça alguma coisa por aqui mas está muito embrionário então a gente vai continuar com as nossas doações que a Dívia a mina põe a chave pix do HCO que é diviazulauf@gmail.com o jeito que que escreve, está no comentário fixo desta transmissão. É, então, quem puder cooperar, a gente agradece muito, né? muito mesmo. A gente tem vontade de seguir com esse programa Forevis, <risos> enquanto dure. Né? Enquanto tiver gente querendo... Enquanto <risos> tiver gente para falar, a gente vai indo. Exatamente. Depois vemos o que acontece, né? no que, que se transforma, como é que segue... Como é que vai? Hoje a gente tem uma entrevista muito especial, mas já vamos falar dela. Vamos com nossos agradecimentos, além dos que eu já falei. Vamos agradecer Miguel Fein, Marisa Rotenberg, Catarina Lira, Gisele Catarino e Priscila Garcia. Nossos colaboradores que fazem desse programa, para esse programa acontecer, sem eles, a gente não teria uma entrevista como essa, né? as imagens, uh, as edições né? que a Tarita Marisa faz, ou os cartazes que o Miguel também atualiza toda semana e coloca para a gente. Então, é a nossa família principal e também as nossas páginas do Facebook, Oxo Sem Fronteiras e Nelsânias, a Nova Realidade, tá? uma galera que cuida dessas páginas, o Oxo Sem Fronteiras é de Sananda, né? e um monte de gente que filtra para que essa página fique puramente textos bons do Oxo, sem né? propagandinhas, coisinhas que não, que não são tão, tão profundas assim, ou que não, que não representam o Oxo. Então, é uma galera que trabalha ali. Né? O Sânia é a nova realidade do Francisco Siqueira também, querido que está aqui, né? e que também tem um trabalho então a gente compartilha nessas páginas isso é muito legal a gente ajuda a divulgar nosso trabalho também e a trazer gente interessada em hoje o que mais? É, não, é só, é, só para fazer uma pequena correção é, não são páginas, são grupos né? procurem grupos do Facebook né? é é, são, quando for procurar, procura grupos, né? Daí, na lupinha lá de grupos, vai aparecer, pro, da palavra hoje, vai aparecer hoje Sem Fronteiras e Nelsanias, a nova realidade. Daí, não procura com a palavra hoje. Esse é o nome do, Fra, do Francisco Siqueira, que nos apoia desde o início dessas transmissões, assim como o Oxo Sem Fronteiras. Então, além de agradecer nossos apoiadores Pix, agradecer a nossa querida Sanguinha, que está com a gente aqui sempre, nossa fada madrinha, a Kilma. né Temos nossos embaixadores e embaixatrizes, que estão espalhados pelo mundo e nos ajudam a contratar as, os convidados. Um recado importante, é, nós não somos um canal oficial do Oxo, não... Uh, temos nenhum vínculo com a Fundação Oxo Internacional, somos apenas contadores de histórias, amigos contadores de histórias, histórias com Oxo, né? Melhor que Netflix, muito melhor. Ah, então, <risos> algum recado mais? Olha, hoje a gente vai transmitir uma entrevista gravada, como quem já acompanha... Vocês vão amar. É só um, um pequeno uh, reca recado técnico. Se houver qualquer travamento, se houver sobreposição de legendas, às vezes, dependendo da configuração da máquina, de quem está nos assistindo, do, da própria configuração do Facebook, da pessoa que pode haver é, a sobreposição de legendas. Porque o nosso vídeo já vem com a legenda em português. Então, se tiver qualquer outra legenda por cima, é a configuração da sua máquina e a gente não pode fazer nada por isso. Tá? Então, só para 
deixar isso claro. E outra coisa, se houver qualquer travamento, qualquer tarja em cima da transmissão, que às vezes acontece, é uma coisa que é um mistério para nós, a gente depois edita, copia, cola só a transmissão da entrevista e coloca no YouTube. E sobre isso, só mais um recado. No YouTube, se você procurar por Divia 10, é uma palavra só. Né? Como escreve o nome da mina ali na tela, né? Divia 10, D-E-Z, né? você procurar lá no YouTube, tem lá playlists. E lá você clica, tem desde a primeira, todinhas, completinhas, com a melhor qualidade possível. Quando dá travamento aqui, lá não tem travamento. Lá está editado e limpinho pelo trabalho é, sensacional da nossa equipe. Né? Quem agradece... Estou aqui que a nossa imagem já está tremida, né? Na, na, na nossa... Ah, melhorou. É, Mas é assim, isso. gente. Internet pode ser intermitente... Por exemplo, para mim não estava, mas dependendo do lugar que você está, isso pode dar é, um mistério nessa né? transmissão toda. Não é garantido, é muito fluxo de lives, e principalmente numa rede social como o Facebook. Então, bem capaz de dar umas intermitências, tá? E a gente vai transmitir aqui, porque é aqui ao vivo que a gente acontece, mas... Amanhã, como o Suki falou, a gente vai estar tá bonitinho no YouTube, com ela na íntegra, com ótima qualidade. E Vamos lá, é? então? Até já. Até já. Lá vou eu. <risos>
I was obvious that those were meditators. I just sat down and meditated with them in silence, not knowing what to expect. And then Osho came into the room and sat in an easy chair. He was wearing white, a white robe, and under the robe there was a lungi. He looked very elegant. And to my eyes, it really looked like he was floating or levitating into the space. He was so graceful, moving so slowly with a namaste, greeting everybody, sitting down in a pool of silence. And then he started commenting on the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. He was giving a series of discourses on that subject. So there I was landed directly into discourse on Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, which blew me away absolutely and completely. And I still remember the sutra he was commenting on. The sutra was, while engaged in sexual union, stay attentive on the fire in the beginning and so continuing avoid the embers in the end he gave a one and a half hour discourse on that sutra and then afterwards we all lined up in the hallway and he passed between the people who were lined up looking deeply into the eyes of several people including me he looked very deeply into my eyes for quite a long time and then he just silently went on his way and the next day what was very surprising my new friend krishna prem he invited me to do osho dynamic meditation on the chaupati beach it was held on the beach in public basically so i joined a few other people and we did osho dynamic meditation which for me was an absolute revelation it was exactly what I had been looking for. And then after that, he invited me. So now you can come to Osho Shaktipat. And I said, oh, but I have to go to my month long retreat. He said, no, but you still have time because this Shaktipat will be at 8 a.m. And then your retreat starts at 10 a.m. So no problem. And so I went along to the Shaktipat, which was also held on the beach, but in a kind of pavilion we were instructed to take a marigold flower to pour our ego into the marigold flower and then to offer this to casts of osho's feet and this was really really uh, amazing experience so i just offered i didn't know exactly what ego is but i kind of imagined it's something that's not serving me so i poured it whatever it is into the flower then i offer it to his cast of his feet they looked golden i don't know what the metal was but they appeared golden and when i offered it to his feet it was something like a thunderbolt coming through my whole body i was absolutely stunned it was so powerful and then i stood and there was like 100 people there and osho appeared and he invited us to give him all of our suffering to cry, to scream, to release, and to just offer him our suffering. And this was an incredible experience, which was in a sense very confusing, because who does that? Who stands there and invites people just to give them <laughs> all of their suffering? And that went on for 20 minutes. People were howling, screaming, crying, and throwing out all of their agony and anguish. And then for the following 20 minutes, he invited us to lay down and he simply poured love and compassion onto us, inviting us to feel the divine and to let it circulate within, to feel the bliss, which is our true nature, to allow love. And so for 20 minutes, he just caressed us with his voice and inviting this bliss and love. And after that, I went into my month-long silent retreat. So you can imagine my inner state. I, I was just cracked wide open. And it was actually very challenging to sit in silent meditation and witness <laughs> all the bubbling, whatever, like what had been cracked open. And I actually needed more dynamic and more release. 
of course, I also love the silent meditation, but I was very much needing to have catharsis. You <clears> was too <throat> young. No? Yeah, I was time. 17 years of age. Yeah. Um, Hormones had, are. <laughs> you know, I had a challenging childhood, so I had a lot of stuff to release. And it was my first introduction to the possibility of doing such a thing. So I survived that month. And then right after that, I went to Mount Abu, where Osho was offering a meditation camp. And during the meditation camp, I was initiated. And from that moment, I stayed in his community for 26 years. So wow. I didn't leave. I just stayed. And that was it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell us about your initiation, your name, meaning, and how was it to get sanyas from him? Oh, it, it was divine. <laughs> what can mm. I say? At, you know, when I came, I didn't even know that he's a guru like I had no idea just my friends told me oh he's doing some meditation gathering there you can go so I went of course from Mumbai that was a long train ride etc and then the day I arrived I arrived actually in the night and I went to the hotel where the meditation camp would be held and Sushila was there and she approached me and she said oh you're coming for the camp and are you a sannyas and I said no he said, oh, so you that means you'll be taking sannyas. I said, I don't know. What is sannyas? She said, but haven't you been reading his books? I said, I didn't know he has books. So she <laughs> said, oh, oh, that's not possible. You have to read a book before you do the camp. And she gave me the book, I Am the Gate. Hmm. And she said, oh, you have to read this before you see him tomorrow. So I stayed up almost all night reading I Am the Gate. <laughs> 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 that completely blown away and then the next morning was 6 a.m was the dynamic meditation guided by Osho himself wow. and in wow. those days in those days there was no uh, CD there was no music no music we just had a row of like six or seven drummers and wow. those drummers were playing for the almost the entire dynamic meditation and Osho was guiding the dynamic, but he was also guiding the drummers, like getting them completely revved up and really into the drumming so that it could be fast enough for us to go into the deep, fast, chaotic breathing, the catharsis, etc., the, the jumping up and down, hoo, hoo, hoo. So it was quite wild. There's and... not celebration at its time, uh, the, the last stage of dynamic or uh finish on stop I, there was the stop and then we would freeze and then after that i'm trying to remember if there was a celebration i don't remember okay but i think there was some kind of celebration like feeling the gratitude or something okay. and um anyway so that day then i was scheduled to see osho and i didn't actually know about sanyas exactly i was a bit confused because nobody was giving so much information. Um, you know how sannyasins are, they don't really proselytize. So to get information is not always evident. And so then I just knew, okay, I'm having a meeting with Osho and I went in to see him. And I still remember I, when I traveled, I used to wear a lot of braids. Like I had something like 36 small braids all over my head because that was very convenient to travel with. And mm. when he saw me, he started laughing. And then the first words he said to me was, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I've been with Goenka. Mm, mm, mm. And where are you going? And I said, I'm going to the Himalayas because I had an idea to find the essence of life. I'll have to go to the Himalayas and find some guru or whatever. <laughs> and I'd never thought I'm going to find him in Mumbai in an apartment. So I was just having my trajectory, my original plan, you know, and then he said, mm, you come to Mumbai, it will be good. Huh. And then he asked me, are you ready for sannyas? And I said, yes, without knowing exactly what it is. And then he, he wrote my name and he said, if you 
continue with meditation, you will become this. And then he gave me the name Ma Ananda Sarita. And he explained Ma means mother of the universe. Ananda means bliss and Sarita means river, river of bliss. Mm -hmm. So, and then he told me we're orange. So that meant, because at that time I didn't have any orange clothes. So then I said, okay, and that was it. And then I was joining the meditation camp and we were allowed to see him during the meditation camp basically every day. So I could see him and he asked me how things are going. And then he told me about coming to Mumbai and things like that. So it was, uh, yeah, it was very, very powerful. And that, you know, the name of the camp was Samadhi Sadhana Shibir, which means camp. He explained it as meaning camp for inner ecstasy and enlightenment. Mm. And so I was thinking, okay, by the end of the 10 days, I'll be enlightened. Yes. <laughs> Whatever so enlightenment is, that will be happening in these 10 days. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> that was just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And how was it, Max? And you, you also came to Oregon? Yeah, then he was in Mumbai, and I, I, in those days, he would see people privately. That was the format. So I used to see him once or twice a week. And wow. during that time, he would be giving some meditation to practice, or he would be checking up how is the meditation practice going. Mm -hmm. And like during that first year, I received many, many different methods, which I practiced very, very diligently. And mm -hmm. I didn't know it at the time, but those were all Tantra methods that he was giving me. Later on, I came to understand, oh, those were all Tantra methods. Whoa. But in those days, he wasn't saying, okay, you're on the path of Tantra and here are the methods. Because uh, people could find their own unique path according to their soul nature. And so maybe he was just letting people discover by trying this and trying that. And eventually they would understand that they're on the Sufi path or on the Tantra path or on the Zen path, whatever it was, because he is a master of masters. So all paths are alive in him. And so people coming from different soul calling, you could say, could feel at home and comfortable with him because of that. That time was in Woodlands? Yeah, he was in Woodlands in the apartment. Okay. And then after that, Pune? Yeah, then it was about a year later, he was moving to Pune. And he told me to go there and to arrive on X date and whatever. So I just went, I got a little accommodation somewhere, and then I was going every day. And at that time, there was only his own home, the Lao Tzu house. There was nothing else. And there was no group room or anything. So then he used to give meditations that could be done in the nature before there was any kind of meditation hall. And so, for example, he told me to do whirling for two hours every day. And I did it for about six months. Um, two whirling. hours? He, he hours. told me to do it for two hours and then to yeah. lay down with my bare belly on the earth. And that was very, very powerful. Wow. Yeah. Can imagine. <laughs> so I used to do it under a tree in a local park and just whirl for two hours and then lay down with my bare belly on the earth as he instructed. <laughs> oh, that's very powerful, yeah. Two very hours, powerful. really. Yeah, whirling. Very, very powerful. It's my and favorite meditation. It's a bit challenging because it's on the bare earth, you know. So yes. it's never completely even. So a little bit challenging how to whirl like that. And yeah, then later on he was making a CD. Or uh, Sorry, in those days it was a 
a vinyl record for the with the whirling music and instruction and he asked me to be on the cover of it probably based on the fact that i had had that deeper experience of whirling and, and then you, you know i was just meditating for i think it was at least uh, a year and a half or something only doing all the meditations the active meditations and whatever meditations he had given me and then at some point he told me it's time to work and to do work as meditation and he invited me to work on a zen path which was being made in his garden and so that's how i came to meet my husband to be <laughs> who was in charge of the zen path and that was very interesting because his words to me were i want you to help yatri on the path mm -hmm. there there was mukta sitting next to him and she said no they don't need anybody to work they have enough workers and then he repeated to mukta i want her to help yatri on the path and mukta still didn't get it she kept on arguing that they don't need somebody and that i i shouldn't go to work there and he went on repeating, he had to repeat five times ah. well, the same thing. And obviously he must have been indicating that he wants me to get to know Yatri better. <laughs> because that that was who became my husband and and uh, Osho married us also. Wow. Nah. Wow. Hmm. Mm. How was it? <laughs> I want to know. Well, it was very Everything. simple. It was in a darshan with Osho, and he gave okay. us a gift and a blessing for our marriage. And then we used to go and see him, and regularly we could bring our problems to him. So this went on for about five years. Like any relationship issues, we would bring to him. <laughs> And he was guiding us in different ways in our relationship. It was a very, very profound experience, extremely profound. And I believe it's all of these experiences that form the foundation of my being able to work with couples through Tantra. Because I work with, with couples and also individuals on the Tantra path. And it's really rooted in so many rich and deep experiences with Osho and having him guide us so intimately and deeply in the relationship dynamic. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a beautiful <laughs> story. What a beautiful path. <laughs> You're going to tell us about your work later, but mm -hmm. now we want to know about your life in Pune and also in the branch. Yes. So in Pune, after working on the Zen path, I was given the job of being a cleaner in Osho's house. And that included also cleaning his bedroom. I was not the chief cleaner of his bedroom. That was another woman named Asta. But I was the, how would we call the follow, uh, the, the cleaner in the wings, like in case Asta needed to do something else at any time, then I would step in. So I did clean his room quite a lot. And that job lasted for eight years. So that was my work as meditation for eight years. It was extremely profound to do cleaning as a meditation and in the master's house and also in the master's bedroom. It was very, very powerful experience. And for me what was very important was disappearing as a presence in order to clean so that i was having this kind of philosophy that when i enter the space the space should already feel clean just by my presence that that was the most important thing and that the physical cleaning was secondary to that so i was always very intent on trying to empty my mind before stepping into the space he inhabited because i didn't want to leave any mental garbage cluttering up the energy in the room you know so that became a kind of uh, 
very deep practice for me. I experienced that the outer cleaning was also a way of doing inner cleaning. And But when I was in his room, I tried to keep pristine, no mind space, which was not always possible. But I endeavored to do that. I could say it like that. Very, very strong meditation. And again, that helps me in my work all the time. Because when we're doing any kind of personal development work, meditation, we are in essence cleaning. It, it is a cleansing process. As Osho said so eloquently, that he's cleaning away what you are not and giving you back who you already are. And so this is part of the process of meditation is cleaning away what we're not. And so I think it helps me very much in the work as well, this, these years of cleaning. And so I continued that job. And then after eight years, I was given a job in the press office. And that happened on the ranch. Now, uh, when Osho was going to USA, I was invited to be on the same flight with him, also in my role as cleaner, to make sure, I mean, this sounds ridiculous, but to make sure that the first class seat that he was in or the first class toilet was clean enough for him to be sitting in during the flight. So that was quite an interesting role, I would say. And then uh, after he arrived, then I was sent to the ranch when there was only 20 people there, the first 20, to help prepare for him to come. So that was a very strong change i could say and it was actually very distressing for me because it was not comfortable on the ranch in those early days we were all sleeping in dormitory so there was about i think 18 men and only two women one of which was me and because they needed men to get out the heavy machinery and start digging and doing all kind of things so in the early days, I was uh, just working there. And then eventually when things started getting up and running, I continued cleaning job. And then eventually I was shifted to a job in the press office. So that was press office and PR. And I continued the press office and PR job for seven years. That was on the ranch, but also once we went back to Puna, Puna 2, I continued the same job for some years and then I shifted to healing arts and working in the field of holistic healing. But of course on the ranch to be in the press office that was a kind of hub of a lot going on because the press was very implicated in the whole unfolding of events there and so I was at the hub of in regards to press and public relations and um, tours, we used to give tours on the ranch to just tourists, people that would come in that wanted to visit. So there was a whole arena where we would take turns giving tours to people and talking about the project. And also it involved giving public talks. So I had to go to like local Lions Club or maybe some university and give discourse on different things about the ranch and respond to questions etc well, and i'll yeah. just tell you a story that was very powerful for me uh, that i was sent to give a talk to one university and there was a big amphitheater so amphitheater means you know there's circular seating all around and basically the person giving the discourse is down and has to look up to the people who are all around. And the people all around, they were from neighboring towns, etc. And they were very upset. They were very upset with the presence of Osho and the ranch and everything. And so they were literally shouting abuse, throwing things at me. It was wow. a very uh, violent kind of situation, volatile. And I remember feeling I was so alone and I felt so exposed and so naked. 
and I felt like I don't know how to handle this. So I sent a silent prayer. Osho, this is too much for me. Please help me. And the moment I said it, the most remarkable thing happened that I felt him entering inside of me and I flew out of my body and I was just standing behind witnessing and he was inside giving the discourse through me. And what was very interesting was to see the whole crowd of people <laughs> because at first they were shouting, throwing things, and then slowly they settled in their seats, slowly they relaxed back. Then they were very, very attentive, even leaning forward, wanting to hear every word. And at the end, I got a standing ovation. Wow. However, because it was not me speaking, I didn't remember anything I said. So I could not remember. And they were crowding around me and saying, where did you learn public speaking? We've never heard anything like it. This is amazing. Please share with us how you were educated. You're so erudite and whatever. And I was literally blushing because what could I say? Oh, my master just spoke through me. No, I couldn't say that. So I just thanked them and, you know, really tried my best to <laughs> answer. And it was a really remarkable experience. And since then, I never had any fear about public speaking. It ended all stage fright. Wow. And I've been in many situations of public speaking and presenting to, you know, hundreds of people, etc. And never again any stage fright after that experience. Was it recorded? No, it was not no. recorded. No. Oh. In those Indeed. days, people didn't think about recording such things, you know. Mm. Yeah. That would be beautiful <laughs> to see, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, because I have literally no memory of what was said. Yes, I can understand. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I understand not remembering, not the whole situation, yeah? I can yeah. just imagine, but not yeah. remembering, I can understand well and yeah. did you go to other places like that they were hostile yeah usually you know there was a lot of hostility and it was a kind of ever-growing hostility so i never had something that extreme like that particular case usually people were more polite they might be very agitated but they would be remain polite but that one they were not polite <laughs> and yeah and so it was also very funny that as part of being a tour guide we would get like regular people coming for the tour and there was a comment that happened many times not just once many times are you putting something in the herbal tea like a uh -huh. drug because we feel so happy and we can't understand why like when we come here we feel happy and then then some other comment would come i think it's all a show you're putting on because i see people so happy here that it's not possible it must be that you're putting on a show just for us to pretend like you're happy just so we think you're happy and <laughs> I said, no, I assure you, we're actually really like that. And we are literally happy. <laughs> and then the next suspicion is there must be some drug being put in the tea. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I, I was going to ask you because I, I've seen something journalists saying that uh, while being with Osho, yeah? Yeah, they thought there's some drug. They, they just couldn't understand what it is to be in the presence of an enlightened being. Yeah. <laughs> so you stayed to the end of the ranch? Yeah, I was there till there was only six people left. We interviewed wow. Subuti some days ago, and mm -hmm. he also tells us that after Osho left, he stayed for a while. Still. Yeah. The yeah. same for you. Yeah, I was there while Osho was on the world tour. 
and also because they thought maybe I have to answer questions from the press, etc. So that was my main role was mm -hmm. during the six months I had to keep on with the press work. Until Osho went back to India, you stayed at the ranch. Is that so? I was at the ranch and then um, eventually the ranch was, everything was winding down. There was only six people left. And then I left with a group of friends and we went to Aspen, Colorado. And we were just, we opened our own cleaning company. So we were cleaning for a while. Then eventually I went to Florida. I worked for a doctor who was also a sannyasin. And then I went back to Pune. But it was not so easy because when I went back at that time, the Indian government, if they knew somebody was an Osho Sanyasin, they would turn them away. So I was turned away at the border when I reached oh. there. Oh. And then from there, I went to Sri Lanka. And then finally, I came back into India from Sri Lanka. So it was a very arduous situation because in Sri Lanka, there was a war. So it was not so easy. And I faced many, many difficulties to come back. Yes, Nivedanu told us something about that, going through the border of Nepal yeah. or something. And it was yeah. very hard to yeah. come into India. Yeah, it was very, very arduous. And finally, I made it. And so then it, that was a great relief. Yeah. Mm. What year was it that you went back? Uh, that was, um, what was it? That was 87. 87. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he left in, I think it was uh, late 85 or something when he left the ranch. And so it was basically a year, something like that, that I had to yeah. be somewhere else. Yes, before going to Pune, he went to Bombay first, yeah. Yeah, he went to Mumbai, then he went to Pune. So it was early on in Pune too that I reached. Uh -huh. How do you see the, the Pune two stage, let's say, of Osho's work? What's well, the difference between the previous ones? You know, there were many difficulties that were faced because in the beginning, when Osho came back to Pune too, the local authorities were trying to harass him very badly. And I don't know if you know about this whole story with Muraji Desai, that Muraji Desai was the prime minister and he was very much antagonistic towards Osho and trying to create as many problems as possible for Osho. And the, the story is that earlier on when Osho was younger he used to travel all around India doing debates mm -hmm. which is a very ancient Indian tradition it's a very noble uh, kind of tradition where mystics would get together and debate and whoever was the winner the other one would become the disciple of the one who was the winner so in that way India in general kept refining its spiritual wisdom through these debates. So Osho was following that, uh, that tradition in a sense of being a debate artist. And he always won debates because he could argue from either side and be very, very eloquent and prove his point. It didn't matter which side he would take, he could always win. And so at one point he was put with Muraji Desai in a debate. And I, from what I understand, he really creamed him, like <laughs> completely destroyed the opponent <laughs> through the debate process. Mm -hmm. And that Muraji Desai was a very sore loser and mm -hmm. always held the grudge against Osho after that. So that may be part of what was behind it. But he was really getting persecuted in those early Pune two days. Um, but in spite of that, and in spite of his health deteriorating, it was a most marvelous time, mm. full of, like, really full of very profound celebration, creativity, an outpouring of new forms of creativity 
in in the ashram yeah that's when the mystery school opened and there were many different things going on the musicians really really coming into full flowering i remember hearing music and so many times feeling oh this music has to go international it's not possible it's only for us it's so beautiful and then of course afterwards so many of our Osho musicians went out into the world and spread their tremendous yes. talent. Yes, we are very fond of uh, Osho's yes. music. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I used to say that that music is enlightened music. Yes. It's so it's beautiful. Amazing. Really, really amazing. 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 A great team of musicians were there in Pune too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Osho developed. Uh, the mystic rose the no mind born again incredible genius methods giving to the world mm -hmm. yeah. and then at a certain point i think it was from about yeah it was from 1989 i started getting very deeply involved in healing and the healing arts and in 1990, I transitioned over from being in the press office to being in the healing arts primarily. And that continued. And then gradually from there, I got into teaching Tantra. Because at a certain point, yeah, that was one of the questions you had raised earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when in our communication, you said like something about um how did i get into tantra and basically i was giving a lot of healing sessions and teaching color light therapy in those days it was called color puncture so i was teaching that and giving sessions and a lot of the issues that people came to healing sessions with were all around sexuality love relationship and I came to realize that at the roots of any kind of physical imbalance, there is usually relational kinds of issues. And then it dawned on me that all these different methods that I had learned from my own personal evolution, which were Tantra methods, that these would be very useful to people who were coming for healing. And so gradually I started teaching some of those methods to my clients. And then weaving them into groups because i was also teaching color light therapy so i would start weaving some of the methods into the groups and then eventually people were so fascinated by the tantra aspect that the tantra took over it, ha it happened organically wow mm -hmm. did you study color puncture directly with peter mando yeah for seven years wow i was completely immersed in the color light therapy deeply deeply immersed yeah and i still practice it today i still love it the same it's just that the tantra took over and so now the color light is more complementary method that i use by the side mm. that's beautiful wow and, what a story <laughs> and another thing that i forgot to mention about puna one i was also one of osho's mediums Oh, and I'm yeah. sure you've heard all about yes, the Gayan, Gayan that, told us about yeah. it. So very, very powerful experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which has helped me tremendously in terms of teaching Tantra as well, because essentially that was a very powerful Tantra initiation that was yes. going on there. <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> that. Uh, you give uh, nowadays uh, training and how is it your work yeah i i've been uh, it's been now since 1998 when i essentially i left the commune in 99 but already from 98 i was teaching a lot in europe or uh, japan okay. so i used to go and also yeah uk europe japan so since then i've been teaching seven levels for couples it's called the soulmate training for couples and i also teach women i teach individual different kind of groups 
also the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, the 112 methods of Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. And I teach that as three times 10 day groups. So it takes three years, one group every year, and you can cover the 112 methods. Wow. Uh, wow. And I have a Tantra teacher training and a goddess essence teacher training. And also something that's very new is the Tantra and yoga teacher training. So these are teacher trainings and numerous wow. other kind of groups, Tantra transformation, master lover. So there's wide range of different offerings, you could say. Mm -hmm. well, well, where does this training take place? Mainly in Bali, but I also teach in India and sometimes in Thailand. And then I'm working with a team who have trained with me. So there's people teaching in Europe also. Wow. wow. People teaching <laughs> in Europe, in, in um, Japan, in India, people from my team. Wow. Wow. I want to meet you in Bali, maybe <laughs> one day. <laughs> That's a beautiful place, yeah, Bali. Yeah. We usually ask people to say, uh, how did it change uh, for you as a sannyasin after Osho left his body? So after he left his body, basically I carried on the same. I, I remained in his community another nine years. However, I had a disagreement with the management, the, the new management, we could say. <laughs> and so I ended up getting banned in 99. Wow. Mm. Mm. Yes. And then, since then, I haven't been back to Pune. Mm. Yes, we heard lots of stories of, on that. Uh, you know? so, uh, uh. Usually we talk, I, I used to talk with Chaitanya Kirti, who is leading the rebels there. <laughs> to... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. I, the thing is, I was very close friends with Nilam. Mm. And so she got banned, I got banned. Like there was a lot of people who got banned around the same time for disagreeing with the management there. Mm -hmm. So these things happen, you know, in life, what to do. Yes. And I just decided, okay, I'm leaving the Buddha field, but the Buddha field is inside of me. Yes. yes. So I yes. can share this Buddha field wherever I go. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah, you spoke about Nilam. We interviewed Priya, mm -hmm. and she also told us something about that. But that's not the subject of our interview. So yes, yeah, we, we don't have to get into that because it's also yeah. boring. All these yes, you yes, know, yes. management or political subjects. Yes, <laughs> the, yes. The most important thing is that Osho is still spreading his nectar in the world in one way yes. or another. Yes, 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 yes. And how do you see Osho's legacy today? Mm. I remember very well that at some point he said he has no contemporary and that he will not have a contemporary for another 200 years. That was not too long before he left his body. I heard him say that. So I think what's happening is that, you know, Osho's way of being is so vast that there's not one person who can carry all of it. So all of us sannyasins are carrying some part of that mm -hmm. and together, all together, that is the whole Osho. But we see many different flowers in the garden of Osho, all spreading some part of the fragrance. Mm -hmm. We could say it something like that. Mm -hmm. So somebody's more oriented with the Zen, somebody with the Sufi, somebody with Tantra, or whatever it is. They whatever they have absorbed from the Master, that much we can spread. And so it's like that. And I'll just tell you a little story. When he left his body, I was there, and so I was staying at the burning that till around maybe three in the morning and then i went back to my room and i was going to sleep and then at the sunrise 
I dreamed that I was standing outside and I was looking. It wasn't sunrise yet. It was like just before dawn. And I saw a huge lotus flower in the sky, all the colors of the rainbow. It was luminous white, but it had inside of it all the colors. And I recognized this is Osho's true body, that the other body was just an illusion. And this is his true body. And then as I was watching this rainbow, I mean, this, this lotus, it started showering all the colors of the rainbow all over the earth. And I understood that in this form, he will be able to be much more effective and that I shouldn't mourn. So this was the message I received. And then I was lifting my arms and shouting, Osho, Osho, Osho. And then I woke up shouting, Osho. <laughs> <laughs> wow. then, that dream, I couldn't mourn. It was not possible. And but that in itself was very challenging. So after a year, I had a dream that I was crying and I was saying to Osho that um, I know that your true body is is not the physical and that you are showering blessings all over the world. So I know that, but I miss touching your feet. And then that missing to touch his physical feet it gave me permission to cry so then i could cry but that was in the dream it was very interesting wow yeah <laughs> another plan <laughs> yeah. very 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 touching another mm. Mm. that's beautiful what you're saying that's pure osho yeah mm. yeah and people you know when i do groups I think it happens to many Osho sannyasins who teach that the people in the groups, they feel Osho's presence. So I've heard it about other sannyasin teachers as well, that people are doing the group with that teacher and then they suddenly feel like Osho is there. And this, this happens many, many times. Yes. That we feel his presence. Yes, and yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yes, yes yeah <laughs> you know that's amazing i used to farm to call musicians to play uh, osho songs wherever center i am in, in uh, working and it's always happened ah uh, yes with the musicians yes it always Definitely. happened and it always happens also with giving osho sannyas whenever I'm offering the sanya ceremony, Osho appears mm -hmm. definitively. There's no question about it. And everybody... Ah. Yeah. Wow. The master are with us. <laughs> yeah. The energy field. And, and, you know, in the groups, sometimes people, they, they really connect with him very strongly and they, they tell me he appeared and he gave them instruction and things. While they're doing some meditation, whatever it is, they they feel him appearing. So this is very mysterious. It's part of the mystery school work. Yeah. yeah. And a miracle too. <laughs> like a miracle. Yeah, it is. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, what a story. What a wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sarita. We always end up our interviews with one last question. I think Divya is going to ask you that. Go for one, it. <laughs> one word for Osho. <laughs> it's my, you know, it's basically my gratitude and my tears from the heart of gratitude. That's, that's all. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful 
stories a little bit of it. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's my yes. pleasure. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. in in case somebody wants to know about my work, I'm yes. with uh, my website is anandasarita.com and my work is called Tantra Essence. So people can find me very easily through those keywords. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Also mm -hmm. in Instagram, yeah. Yeah, also in Instagram, Ananda Sarita. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, beloved. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Really a pleasure was, to connect with you. Was that, uh, uh, a very significant moment here for me yeah. to hear you, and I can feel Osho's presence. In this interview too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh show. Oh show. Oh show. Oh show. Oh Bye bye. 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 We love it. Ai, gente, com lágrimas nos olhos, <risos> coração transbordando de emoção. A gente que fica sorte. muito feliz de compartilhar isso, né? Acho que começa que... lá atrás, né? É, começa... que, sabe, começou pedindo carona, pedindo uma vida inteira, mestre, dos 17 anos em diante... E com tudo, né? Duas horas de... Fiquei imaginando, assim, se eu tivesse 17 anos, né? Hum. Nos meus 17 anos dessa vida, como, como seria isso? E, e realmente essas pessoas que se jogaram no fluxo do amor do mestre, de confiança. De confiança, que imagina, numa época sem internet sem muito conhecimento das coisas, sem Google, né? E, assim, se dedicar e se jogar uma vida inteira é, é uma sintonia muito fina entre mestre e discípulo. Então, cara, quando vem essas entrevistas, elas acabam comigo. <risos> é, eu ia tá falar. Sentido, né? Eu ia falar outra coisa aqui que essas entrevistas para a gente começa lá atrás quando faz contato com a pessoa, quando consegue falar com a pessoa, quando grava com a pessoa, que depois fica trabalhando na edição, vendo, é. revendo e Sim, várias vezes, né? Então é, é muito bom. <risos> Muito, grat... final, muito, né? é, muito gratificante ver isso acontecer, assim, uma história tão incrível dela, né? É, tão é. incrível. Aquela, aquela, aquela cena que ela descreve dela né, se vendo no, no anfiteatro com hostilidade toda na volta e de repente é. algo acontece é. ali. O Wild Wild Country sabe, né? Que o, que o clima ali estava é e... E como rolou, né? Como rolou é. e como é que se saiu a história incrível. Eu já vi, eu vi uma, um, um vídeo com um jornalista falando isso, né? O que, que acontece quando a gente chega aqui? <risos> Quer saber? Procura um discípulo do Osho, que é mestre acordado. Tem vários. Você vai sentir o gostinho disso. Tem várias flores do Osho por aí. Queridos, gente, até, até a terça que vem tem mais outra que linda vem. história. A gente se encontra. Beijos, beijos. Tchau, sanguinha. <risos>